уборы. What's up, everybody? I know you guys have all been asking for uh, something other than another damn Jeep, and as you can see here, that's what we got. Um, this is a, I believe, 2000 Forerunner. Either way, 9602. Uh, supercharged, which is cool to see. Pretty rare to have that come from the factory. Finally getting a full runner in the shop. We're gonna do the WFO concepts, you know, the radius arm kit in the front, super duty axle in the front, 14 bolt in the rear. 40 inch nitto has got some real nice, shiny, polished up wheels for it. And so we're gonna get rolling on this thing, get her up in the air, get all of this factory flappy daffy IFS crap out of there and start cutting. Alright, stay two on the forerunner build as you can see. Something's missing. I say as you can see a lot. But yeah, got everything cut off. I just gotta go through with the plasma, scarf all this crap off, grind everything clean. The other side's already ground clean. Once I get all that done, I'm gonna hop back here, get the cross member out, put our cross member in, and then come up front, do the frame plates, get the steering box holes done. Hopefully hang an axle. Trevor said I got all day to play with this thing, so we're gonna see what happens, but stay tuned. Keep watching and get something going. Obviously, IFS stripped out, frame plates welded on, inner frame plates welded on, frame's been sleeved for the IFS steering box sitting over there. WFO cross members all bolted in there. We gotta do the trail gear oil pan kit that puts it to a rear sump pan. Obviously, these IFS pans aren't the greatest for clearing a solid axle. Drop the thing down a little bit, hop up top, do all the power steering stuff, hook it up to the steering box, and uh, at that point, we will be ready to hang an axle. Did a whole lot of work yesterday. You're not gonna see a whole lot of the progress and that's kind of my goal. It's a lot of hidden stuff. So I put the PSC pump in there with a the trail gear bracket. Got the PSC cooler, all the lines are run. PSC reservoir, you know, all the little steering stuff that nobody really thinks about doing. Had to make a couple custom brackets. If you do buy one of these kits for a Tacoma or a 4Runner, in essence, this is what you're gonna get. Obviously, you'll have another tower. You'll have your lowers and the other upper, another frame plate. Couple of little things. These frame plates are designed to strengthen your factory frame, 3 16 thick. You got nice rosette holes in there. You got the VIN cutout plates. The factory frames are actually pretty tough on these trucks, but when you're throwing a like 750, 800 pound axle in there, plus 40 inch tires, if you've got big wheels on there, that's gonna weigh more. You got your coilovers. There's a lot more stress on the frame. So welding these on, kind of cleans up the look if you do any gouges in the frame. Everybody does. Once you get these welded on, gives you a nice flat platform to weld your WFO shock towers on. Very nice. Don't taste very good though. And that'll be holding your coilovers in there. We have our custom bent track bar. We got DNAs in the track bar and the drag link so you don't have to pull any ends out to adjust anything. You just twist this little doohickey here and it does things. This is all inch and a half, 250 DOM, real strong material. All the clevises and everything are quarter inch, super strong material. We sell you FK Himes for your track bar because track bars are important. They kind of keep the axle where it is and that's something that you want. And then uh, we give you this here track bar bracket, fits on the 05 and up Super Duty axles. Obviously this is a 05 and up Super Duty kit because these are made for the bushings that come on those axles. And then we also have, uh, I believe it's sitting on the bench right there, a track bar bracket for the frame side as well. These brackets are all optimized for the geometry that these axles have set up in these rigs. There's no real adjustment needed in the height of your brackets to get the right geometry to keep your track bar and your uh, drag link level, which is important for not having bump steer. If you come on down to WFO Concepts, you will get a quality product. And this is the kit you'll get. So if you got a uh, first gen Tacoma or a third gen 4Runner and you want to put that one ton axle in the front, this is the kit you're going to want. Let's get back to building this thing. Five and up Super Duty axle, bolted in, mocked up. Our uh, WFO radius arm kit is all bolted in there. We got the track bar bracket tacked on the frame and the axle. Track bar's mocked up in there. As you can see, drag link's out of here right now. She's hanging out in the back of the steering shaft. Made some bump extensions for the, I don't know where I put them. It's a factory like 05 and up Ford rubber bump. It's kind of the budget option as opposed to doing air bump. Towers are tacked in. I had to do some little mods to them. Got them all set up and ready to go. And obviously the frame plate's already welded, but I got to weld the towers on both sides. I got to weld the track bar bracket on the axle and the frame. 
We'll have these little bump extensions on. Uh, these little tabs for the brake lines, that's just quick little welds there. Uh, mount the PSC ram on there. Get the axle all painted, get the links painted, get the frame painted. Slap her on back in there, move on to the rear. Are you mouthing things? Are you like my teleprompter? Update on the 4Runner. Painted, got the axle in, everything's fully welded. Got the breather in there, ARB line, brake lines are hooked up. Got the ram mounted, WFO aluminum tie rod for these 05 and up axles, which is uh, spiffy. That's the front, pretty much done. <laughs> Come back with a vengeance. Hey, Helen Keller, what are you taping? <laughs> when, when you build these forerunners with these big tires, you gotta trim in some strange spots. The window is a very common clearance. I'll go issue get the with diamond tires. blade for the glass. The mirror, gotta go. Gotta get rid of it. We're gonna mark that. Um, it's like the Forest Service marking trees right this now. This lug, no, that lug's gotta go. Anyways, well, now that we're all ready to trim with some very nice lines, forerunners out of the shop. It's dusty. You're dusty. We gotta trim the trim. Yeah, we gotta trim the trim then trim the trim mounting. So now that we got all the brake lines in, obviously I bled the brakes because I got it out here somehow. Mounted a shock on that side. We're doing a single shock. It's like yogging, big in Europe. Don't know what that is, but I'm gonna agree It's where you them. run for an intermediate amount of time. Don't care. And I'm gonna show you guys something I'm pretty proud of. So I've been uh, working the solid lately, as they say, solid works. And if you sneak into this little hole here where uh, we gotta do some, you know, trimming, um, Designed this little shock tower here because we don't have a shock tower for the rear of a 4Runner because we really don't build many 4Runners in-house. Designed that little bad boy, kind of sneaks a, uh, we got Fox 2 uh, what, 12-inch travels in this Those thing? Those are 12-inch 2 Fox IFPs. Ooh, yeah, I forgot they're fancy. But yeah, so I'm gonna be sitting out here with an angle grinder just really being sad because I love Toyotas and I hate cutting them up, but it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna wheel good, it's gonna look good. It's gonna be good. done. The uh, Forerunner has been in the shop for a couple weeks now. Finally all finished up. So I guess to do just a quick breakdown on this thing, factory bumper trim, we built a custom winch mount, did a little radiator guard because on these Forerunners and same generation Tacomas, the radiator hangs down off the frame about that far and uh, if you know anything about vehicles at all, that's a pretty important component. This one is not typical. We got the supercharger in there. Had to build a little bracket over there for the PSC. We have a PSC pump, PSC reservoir, and cooler tucked in here behind the grill. All of that is to push fluid to a trail gear steering box in here, which is, if you, you can use a factory Toyota box, but most of them at this point are pushing an age where they're really not in great shape and you can rebuild them, but it's kind of not the best option. So trail gear sells these rebuilt boxes. We threw that in there. Um, because these Forerunners have, for the IFS, a rack and pinion steering setup, which obviously does not work with a solid axle. Um, so our frame plates accommodate to put that steering box on the frame there. And as you can see, our track bar bracket, shock towers are in Fox uh, Factory Race Series 2.0 by 12 inch travel coilovers. On our kits, we always run a 2.0 shock because <clears throat> if you get down in there, the coil and the radius arm do get very close. 
and on flex they get obviously even closer. So 2 is pretty much our size that we use on these kits. But if you move back, you can see we have our cross member that just welds right to the frame. You bolt that up to the uh, transmission mount on the tranny and goes right in there. You do retain the factory drive line unless you're going crazy with pushing the axle forward, which we don't recommend because it kind of gets close to the steering box and pitman arm clearances. You can reuse your factory front drive line, which is very nice. And the rear drive line is very close. Um, obviously, we push both axles out a little bit. The rear axle going back means that you have to compensate for that. So the rear drive line, I believe, is two or three inches longer. Don't quote me on that number. Coming to the back, we got a WFO built 14 bolt. Forgot to mention. Front axle is a uh, 05 and up Super Duty axle, also built by WFO Gear and Axle. Grizzly locker in the rear, it's a, similar to a limited slip. And then in the front, we have an ARB locker. If you want to come around the back here, we did something pretty cool. Don't mind the uh, cooler. I think she plans on partying with this thing. She wanted to have onboard air, the ability to air up her tires, but also to control her lockers, because, you know, air locker, you need air. Well, not a whole lot of room on a third gen 4Runner for a dual air B compressor that's about that big. So, we hit it. Got the compressor mounted in there, airline running up to the front, as well as the power harness. And there's a solenoid block up the front with a reservoir that controls your lockers and has a air check. So. You know, you go down to the trail, you're down about 8, 10 PSI, and you get off the trail and you want to drive home without being a little terrified to drive home. So you plug that bad boy in, flip the switch and the factory location on the dash and air your tires up. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to talk about on this thing. It's all finished up, ready to go. Uh, got those Raceline 17 inch bead locks with my personal favorite tire, and I cannot talk enough about how much I love these things. The 40 inch Nitto Trail Glapplers, just great tires all around, good on the road, pretty well balanced straight out of the factory, and uh, they work great on the trail. Yep, that's about the full story on this thing. It's all done up, it's gonna be going home here soon, and uh, be on to the next ones. Thanks for watching, and if you wanna see more builds like this, look up WFO wherever you wanna watch stuff. It'll be there, and so will I.